So in my next video, I am going to rework the hitbox because as you can see, sometimes my punches whiff and it doesn't hit. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do in the next episode. Introducing Muchacho Hitbox. This is a hitbox module that uses the new special query parts to make the hitbox. So it will cast a 3D box or ball and it will detect the parts inside of it. So let's insert this module and open it. Look at this cool text server. There is a sample code right here. Feel free to read it yourself. And below here is the AP. Before we try to make anything too crazy, we need to understand it first. So let's put this inside of server storage. And we're going to create a script inside of server storage. To first use any module scripts, you're obviously going to need to require it. And now we're going to create the hitbox object by using module.createHitbox. And then we can set the properties. I'll set the size to 111 and set the C frame to C frame but new 010 so it's above the ground layer. Then we can start the hitbox and connect the touched event to a function. There are still parameters the head and the human. I'm going to warn this head and make the human take 20 damage. So let's test this out. As you can see, there's this tiny hitbox over here, and I'm going to move the dummy over here to make it lose health. And if I move the other dummy, it's also going to take damage. But it's not going to damage the dummy multiple times because there is a built-in debounce or hit list inside of the module. Hitbox is too small, so let's change the size to vector 3 666 And I'm going to change the C-frame to the part. There's two options for the C-frame property. You could either put in a C-frame or put in an object. If you put in an object, then the hitbox will follow the object. Since we've set it to an object, we can move this part right here and it'll follow it. Now let's get into the other properties. Like this property, offset, the name is self explanatory. It sets an offset for the hitbox and it takes in a C frame. So let's set the offset to C frame dot new 002 to make the hitbox behind the part. And as you can see, the hitbox is behind the part. And for whatever reason you want to change the shape of the ball, you can change it by um, setting the shape of the hitbox to an ampart type wall. Now let's say you don't want the hitbox with your character. Well, you can use overlap params. It works almost the same way as right by cast params, but it has um, different properties. But the properties we're going to use are the same properties in of Rekish Primes. Set the filter type to blacklist, and I'm going to put the dummy inside of filter descendant instances. Now set the overlap params to the params variable we just made. And look, the hitbox ignored the dummy. So let's remove the params and let's get into detection mode. There's three detection modes, one default detection mode, Two hit parts and three hit ones. Now I'm going to be using the hit ones detection mode. The name is self explanatory. We just put a string and type the detection mode you want. And the hitbox stopped after touching a dummy. That's because hit ones only hits a player once or a humanite once. Now in hit parts, this detection mode hits parts but it doesn't return a humanite. So you have to manually check for the humanite. So let's comment this out. Comment how to really take damage, and as you can see, it's putting out the parts it hit. Now that we know how to use it, let's try to make a punch. I'm going to make this punch real simple, so I'll make it a tool. We're going to need to turn off requires handle since we need the dot activated event without a handle since we're going to be using our face, you know, add in a script and an animation. Yep, this animation looks fine. Copying the ID and pressing it here, reprinting this object to the tool. Now let's reference the tool. Since the tool is the parent of the script, we're going to do script.parent, require the hitbox module, set the dot activated event to a function, reference the character by doing tool.parent, because when you equip the tool, the tool will be inside of your character. Now reference the animation. Make the hitbox object. I'm going to make the hitbox size to my arm size and set the C frame to arm, not arm dot C frame, but arm. Since I'm going to make the hitbox for my arm, do the dot touch the fan, set the damage in, start the hitbox, play the animation. 
Now I'm going to make it so that box stops when the animation stops. So I'm going to add an animation dot stop event to a function and I'll stop that box here. Now this may look smoothly in paper, but no, the hitbox will lag behind because of latency. The hitbox works by creating a hitbox and setting the C-frame to the part C-frame. The thing is, the character position in the server and, it, and in the client are always different. That's because your client has to fire a signal to the server in order to update your character's movement. And that signal is not instantaneous. The delay will vary depending on your country. Now, to compensate for the delay, we're going to have to make the hitbox really big, maybe like .new666 and change the C-frame to the row part so it's in the middle and add an offset to make it in front of the character. I'll set the offset to C-frame.new00-2.5. Now, let's try this out. As you can see, because the hitbox is already in front of the player, it doesn't match the animation. When it's flowing the arm, the hitbox goes from back to forward, but now it's already at front. So when you're winding up, it's gonna hit the dummy before your punch lands the dummy. So we're going to delay the hitbox a little bit by doing wait. Now in my animation, it takes 0.16 seconds from my character to throw the punch. So I'll do task to wait 0.16 seconds. And now our punch tool is finally complete. You can turn off the visualizer if you want using dot visualizer equals false. Now let's say you want to make an AOE tool, and maybe you want to make the hitbox a sphere. Well, that's simple enough. You change the size to a number instead of a vector 3, and you set the shape to an type ball. Now we need to create some effects using twin surface. I'll reference twin surface and create twin info, and I'll, and I'll create the sphere part. I'm going to make the sphere part grow, and I'll play the twin and modify some stuff like the size, and there's your AOE move. Alright, this is it for the module showcase. I will use this module a lot in the future. Thank you for watching this video and see you next time.